I said I'd come back and I, and I wanted to share something else with you. You know, um, you know, we got to be disciples who make disciples. See, there is a problem in the church. And we know that, that the church has been closed because of the pandemic. But there's still a problem. Because a lot of people didn't even want to show up for to be on, on, on online or Google Duo. And when the churches start to reopen, folks still, they got complacent and didn't want to come back to the church. So, you know, is this the greatest plague of the modern church age? We no longer find discipleship important. See, discipleship is still important. We can't take away and water down and add and subtract, but people have done that. And, and there was a study that was done. I, I didn't do the study. I, I just want you to know that I came across this, but I, I there was a study that was done. And uh, in 2016, it was a study that was doing, done by the Borner Group. And it says only two in 10 Christians participated in discipleship activities. And you would be amazed that at, at my former church, I was amazed at how many people that didn't want to do outreach. I was, excuse me, I've been amazed at people that don't want to do outreach. They have every excuse in the book. And I'm not talking about if, you know, health, excuse me, health reasons and things like that. But just, I'm scared. I'm talking about, I'm afraid I don't know enough. But if you come out, you will see that you will be able to learn from others and shadow and even get and be encouraged and, and get the courage to speak up, to talk about Christ. But you'd be amazed. But see, people don't want to do Sunday school anymore. They run off to brunches and breakfast. They don't have time for Sunday school. Instead of bringing a snack in between and snacking on it so you can make it to Sunday school or some every fourth Sunday bring, you know, maybe there's a breakfast and you have and you discuss and have a quiz or a test and talk about what you've covered the whole month. Those are things that can make Sunday school interesting and even Bible studies and small groups and one on one mentorship. There's nothing wrong with one on one mentorship and studying a book of the Bible and discussing it as a group, like a, a, a supplemental book, you know. Idols of the heart, you know, or just different books, you know, that, uh, that, that complement the word of God and, and they align with the word of God, but people just are not interested. They are too busy doing other things. And I just don't have time is what you hear a lot of. And so I wouldn't be surprised if I did a study. Now I wouldn't be surprised in 2021 if the number now is even lower, <laughs> okay? And it was already low. How low can you go? You could be zero or minus, <laughs> minus be low, if you hear what I'm saying. You know, and, and people look at Sunday school as a thing of the past, or they look at it as that's for children. Sunday school is not just for children. I learned a lot in Sunday school, and I continue to learn. And Bible study also because I have that hunger and I've asked God, Lord, continue to give me that hunger for the word of truth. And so you got to have that hunger for the word and small groups aren't offered in many churches and mentorship is a rare occurrence. It's a rare occurrence. And I'm going to tell you something. Those are the things that make up discipleship. And a lot of times people get afraid that they have to disciple someone else. We expect the pastor to do it or Bible study teachers. But if you know the word of God for yourself, you can actually sit down and help someone else in the word of God and, and, and mentor someone else in the word of God and talk about the word of God while you're out and about. Because there are places that you can go in the parks and on your walks and, and talk about the word of God. There's always people when I'm out running or doing my power walk daily, I'll run into people all the time that they want to talk to me. And I ran into a young man yesterday that stopped me to talk to me and he wanted to talk about the word of God. 
and I engaged him. Because it's so important to keep the keep God alive. We can't forget Christ and we can't forget the Son of God. We can't forget Jesus. We can't stop being concerned that he died on the cross for our sins, that he paid the penalty for our sins, that we may have eternal life. We can't stop being concerned. We can't. And see, I'm going to tell you something about discipleship. When you're discipling, you're going to be vulnerable. And it is going to, oftentimes, it will reveal our deficit of our spiritual lives. It does. And we'll see that there could be a lack of discipleship even in generations. Because somewhere someone ended it and then pursue it and then keep it going in the family or in the church family. But see, we are called to make disciples, not just in our homes, but outside our homes. We are called to teach and show those young in the faith, babes in Christ, the way to go and the truth to follow. We have to be open to the word. And we got to be able to point them to truth in all things and at all times. We can never take a break from the true word of God. And there are people that have taken a break from the true word of God by lying and twisting the truth and falling into false doctrine and misleading people that are following them. And for the ones that are doing it, I pray for you. And your soul. Because God is going to deal with you. And hold you accountable. To your false doctrines. And misleading people. See. We have to be able to. Listen to sound teaching. We cannot we can't be like the church in Galatia. We cannot. Because they were false teachers that sought to tell another story. And there is people out here that are false teachers that seek to tell another story about the gospel. And they will put conditions on the word of Christ and the cross. Yeah, but, yeah, mm mm-hmm. And they will seek to make you a part of the equation. That's important. Don't let them make you a part of their equation. And there are some people that are part of an equation of false teachers and false doctrine, even in the life that they're living and the background, and you will find out not just in their past. I'm not talking about that because, you know, we all have a past and some people have done things, but they have turned their life over to Christ and they're no longer that type of person anymore. But I'm talking about these people that are still that type of person, active crime activity, active cases open, going to trial, just being sentenced, still living a life of sin. And I don't want to, you know, there is, we know that, I mean, you've watched videos and people were talking about people, you know, sleeping with other people and cheating on their wives. And, you know, if you're on social media, you know, and you see it and, and, and they're, they, they, they are living that type of lifestyle. And so they want to put conditions on the work of Christ and the cross and they want to seek to make you a part of their equation and they want to diminish his Christ's power and they will seek to contradict the word of God. And they'll sit here and say, well, we're not perfect. I'm not perfect. Well, we know we're not perfect. Only Christ is perfect. We have several imperfections and blemishes. We are a cracked pot. But you all, if you say you, if you teaching the word of God and preaching it, and living a crazy, a bad lifestyle of sin, you're not trying to do better. So you are misleading people when you sit up 
and, and well, you want people to have empathy for your imperfections. That's nothing but misaligned empathy. When you know better, you should be doing better. And there is people out here that are teaching false doctrine. They know better, but they're not doing better. And they'll get on their horn and say, and use their vocal cords to say, well, I'm not perfect. But you teaching to other people about the word of God. But you are misleading them. And you're trying to diminish Christ's power. And you're seeking to contradict the word of God. And putting conditions on the work of Christ and the cross. And making people a part of the equation. And my people, I'm, whoever you are, if you don't peep game. With these false teachers and these folks that's talking about God, but living an alternative lifestyle of sin and all this other stuff that, that falls under sin and telling you they're not perfect. But if they're talking about Christ, they shouldn't be actively doing all those things. Yeah, we fall down and we fall short, but come on now. We can't be watering down the gospel and, and seeking to contradict God's word and trying to take it out of context. And the first thing our people's about, I'm not perfect. Well, we know and God knows you're not perfect. But if you are talking about God's word, you know better and you should be doing better. See, that's where we need to stay woke, folks, and, and, and peep game and be alert. See, we must make sure that the voices we're listening to or pouring out sound doctrine and truth from the scripture. We got to spend time in the word. This is how we safeguard ourselves. We know the truth and we learn to recognize the voice of our father. Learning to recognize the voice of our father. Time spent listening to God will help us tune out false teaching or shut it down. Shut it down. Tune it out. Because when you know the truth, you'll hear the truth. And you'll live by the truth. Let me say that again. When you know the truth, you'll hear the truth. And you'll live by the truth. Because you will recognize the voice of our Father. With a capital F. Our Father. And I'm not talking about your earthly father. Your eternal and spiritual father. See, false teachers will come and go. Some of them have lasted a long time. There was a false prophet that he got in some trouble. If anybody remember Peter Parfoff, he had gotten in some trouble. So they come and go and they come back. And you got to be prepared. And I'm, and I'm not saying nothing negative about him. I'm just saying, people come and go as false prophets, as false teachers. And there's a lot of them out here that's coming and going, and some are coming back. And we can name some other ones. And I'll say allegedly, just to be on the safe side, but there's a lot more out here that I won't name, but he came to mind immediately. But I'm just saying... Be ready, my brothers and sisters, my friends and family, my ride or dies, and even the ones that I don't know you that's stopping by the channel today. Be ready, stand firm, and know the gospel for yourself. Know the gospel for yourself. And seek and thrive and strive to walk with Jesus every day. God is an awesome, mighty God. He is, and we just got to be prepared. Key, preparation is the key. And the key to preparation is studying to show yourself approved. The key to preparation is reading the word of God for yourself and debunking the lies and knowing your father's voice, recognizing it and walking away 
from false teachings and doctrines. Getting away from it. Shutting it down. And recognizing that false teachers will come and go and some will come back. But living a life of holiness is not going to always be easy. It's not an easy ride. And studying the word of God is not easy either. Because you because you can get stuck and say, I need to look that up. I don't understand that. It's time consuming. But it's a good time. It's a good time in the Lord. It's always a good time to praise God and study his word and, and to worship Christ and be around like-minded and believers. It's always a good thing and it's good news when you can witness and, and be that disciple and when you're out there discipling to a beacon, be a beacon of light and hope for others. And don't get caught up in titles. Because some people just want titles. Doctor this and pastor that and bishop that. Because it sounds good. But then they're misleading congregations and people. And some of them are even misleading their families. And I won't get into some things that I know. But I know some pastors that even have went as far as to tell their tell their women female con female congregants that they shouldn't be having you know intimate relations with their husbands now you know that's false teaching so all I'm saying is no the word for your stuff study to show yourself approved and write down questions that you may have when you get stuck and you haven't been able to find the answer in your Bible study and share them. No, dumb, no question is a dumb question. Don't be afraid to ask questions in your Bible study. And if you have deacons in your church, don't be afraid to consult with them. And don't be afraid to shut down false teachings. And walk away. Tune it out. When you know. That they are not teaching the true gospel. But be ready. Stand firm. And know the gospel. God bless you all on today. Love you. Peace out.